Jeff Bacalar, I've got a secret. Uh, okay, I didn't expect that, but let's hear it. All right. I have been playing Halo for the past, I don't know, week or so. That's what this is? Yeah. I've brought you here to talk to you about the Halo Infinite campaign. Oh, shit. Campaign, okay. Not the multiplayer. The multiplayer is out. Everyone's playing yeah. the multiplayer. It was a very weird thing to have the multiplayer come out and go like, oh, I've, I'm over, I've been playing the camp campaign. That's weird. Um, so we can talk about some limited bits from the first four missions of the campaign and show some chunks of footage from there. Um, okay. Which we're going to do, and I think it will show off the nature of this game and how it is different from the traditional Halo experience while also still being a traditional Halo experience. You know what I mean? Game about nature. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, I guess, as a precursor for people watching, I skipped like as many cutscenes as I could. Um, you know, they had some specific restrictions about cinematics and not showing some of mm. those. Um, but I kind of went a little extra on some of that and skipped um, more story sequences on top of that. I just felt it was, you know, it's the sort of stuff people would probably want to see themselves when this thing comes out sure. next month. Um, on behalf of everyone, so, I'll thank you in advance for that. Yeah. And uh, and I died a bunch. So if you want to hear grunts talking about uh, how laughably weak the Master Chief is, you'll get some of that in there too, which is fun. <laughs> Let's get into it. Um, the game opens pretty um, pretty quickly. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't mess around with a lot of story up front. It kind of has uh, a, a little a little sequence that has you meeting the pilot from that ship that they showed in, in the trailer, and then you're off to the races uh, trying to get free. Uh, by invading their warship. So you can scan. You can see that's a little scan. Okay, and, and, and what does that add to the? That uh, that waypoint pip shows up there. It also highlights weapons and other interactive objects in the environment. So you know, at the end of a battle, if you're just like, I need to see where this is or where this is, like you can um, you can highlight all that sort of stuff. It's uh, it's handy. It's not quite a detective vision sort of thing, but, uh, you know, it does give you that look at like, okay, what, what is around here? Turns out a whole lot of nothing. Um, so out of the gate, right? Like mm -hmm. what is immediately, what, 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 what is tangibly sort of different where you're just like, or maybe not, do you have a reaction of like, oh, this is, oh, they're doing this now. So I think that's the, it takes a couple of missions before they get to where they want to take you. Um, okay. and before they show you the true nature of, of the game. Um, and so these first two missions here, this is, this is mission one. This is a halo ass halo mission. You've got your grappling hook and I'm about to use it, um, right about here to get across this gap and it's super fun. Uh, yeah. you can reel yourself. You can, you can grapple onto enemies and you'll reel into them, which is always fun. You kind of reel in and melee them. Uh, and the grappling hook is super cool. Uh, you eventually unlock additional gadgets for that slot. You can kind of toggle between them and toggle uh, your grenade type with uh, left and right on the D-pad. Um, but the big difference, yeah, right now is is that grappling hook um, for stuff like that. That's super fun. fun. Yeah, and it's, a, you know, like... it, it's a nice looking game. You know, for me, like, I, having played every uh, Halo campaign all the way through, if you ask me to uh, differentiate the last, you know, three, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. They are a blur to me. Yeah. Um, they they just all kind of you know mesh together in the same solution, and I think for me, like that's why I kind of limp into some some of these games when they come out, where I'm just like. Okay, well, what's happening here? What's the reason for me to get excited? I mean, yeah, and I think that's the 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 start of this game doesn't do doesn't do a lot to kind of ground you in the fiction again in terms of like remembering like what the heck happened in Halo Four and Five. Like basically, right. I'm going into this game 
like you having played through those campaigns and enjoyed them enough um sure. but like all i remember is like hey cortana kind of went crazy and she's maybe bad now um and she's not living in my head anymore and i think we have to resolve that and so the early parts of the game do kind of hint it at that um so i suspect that we'll get there but you know th there's also this this threat of the banished which are kind of these you know it's a similar enemy types to other halo games but they are they have been banished from the covenant and so they are even worse even more evil or something like that and they've taken over zeta halo which is this uh it's another halo ring <laughs> turns out turns out there's uh, even more halo rings than you thought um and I, you know, I, I'm not a lore master when it comes to Halo. So like how much of this was in a book or in Halo Wars or something like that? Like, I can't, I can't really tell you. Um, yeah. Who but, among us is a Halo master? Exactly. Yeah, no, I, it's not, it's just not, you know, I, I respect that they have been building this thing for 20 years, but I just don't, I don't have it in me to, to follow the books all that closely. Um, throwing this stuff is really fun. You just, you can pick up those, uh, blast cores or canisters or whatever and, and fling them at people. You can shoot them in the air and, and do some fun tricks that way too. I'm trying to get a little creative here with the grappling hook and I don't think it's going to pay off for me. But I gotta um, say, there is a flow. There is a, a a discernible flow that I feel like I'm starting to get a little excited about. Just attempting to see what, I, what you know, how that shakes out for when I play. Um, yeah, there's you can this I'm playing at a slightly faster pace than maybe I would normally like I, I'm I try to I try to hang back and let the shield recharge but uh, you know in the interests of of keeping things moving and, and I, I get a little too reckless and, and end up dying probably about three times here which, you know hey you'll see me approach this encounter from multiple ways how about that that's a uh, <laughs> that was the point of it all exactly I mean, look, that was why we did this Dr. Jonathan Halo has many ways to approach a given battle. Yeah. And your turning radius is bad when you're holding the big weapon, so that's why that guy got me there. Spartan Dead Glory. Spartan Dead Glory. Pretty good loading times. Um, and we're back. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I I think the visual fidelity, just the just the graphics and just the textures and lighting and stuff like that is really top notch. Um, it's just a a great looking game. I think the the second mission, which we'll we'll see in a little bit here, um, just has some really nice looking corridors. See, I fucked that up, and now this door can't right. even close. I, I don't know about the extra bullets into your lifeless corpse at the end. That was just a little classless there I, you know they're they're banished for a reason you know they fight yeah. without honor that's their whole thing um it would be out of character to not i guess yeah you know they're literally brutes what would you expect from a brute that type Nothing of boorishness yeah yeah um yeah so i i am having a really great time with this. The other thing I'll say, and, and just to foreshadow what's going to happen in about 20 minutes here, is when you finish the, the, this game as a completion percentage that it shows you. Oh. And when okay. you complete the first mission, when you go back to load in, uh, it says you are 1% complete. <laughs> okay. Which normally a Halo campaign is a traditional set of levels. ODST broke out into kind of its open world, but it was still really... Um, a set of very traditional Halo levels, just with a slightly different dressing. There, I skipped a cutscene. Um, yeah. And uh, so that was my first sign that this was going to be a very different game. And I think you know they've alluded to this, and and I've been you know I, I haven't read every single piece of preview coverage that comes out. I know there's been some recent looks at at this first level. Um, right. But. Uh, and I think they, they foreshadowed it a little bit in some of the art that they have put out. But this is eventually going to turn into a pretty open world game. Yeah, I um, mean, that very first uh, preview, which I guess we don't have to speak too much of, but they, there was a map. A little, there was a kind of map yeah. thing that was, I guess, the first indicator that maybe... Halo's Mr. John Halo's gonna have to learn how to read a map. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's there's definitely some some map reading, um, and we get this cool escape sequence. So we've basically, you know, the 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 pilot from that trailer, he's back in his ship, and he's trapped in a stasis beam. They're trying to board his ship. So you say, oh, don't wor-. you say, don't worry about it. I'm gonna go do a halo. Um, and then you get over here, you do a halo, you blow up their fucking ship, and then run out of it as it's exploding. Like a really strong opener. Um, in terms of all the physics and just like all the stuff blowing up here uh, as you're trying to get out. These, These guys, guys are like, nope, we're gonna have to try to continue to kill you and not save yeah. ourselves. There's always like one or two of them that are just like, no, I gotta finish the mission as opposed to, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> Seems bad. Seems yeah, bad in some here. Goop now. on the floor. We got to grapple over the goop. Oh boy. That broke. Oh, that's fun. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So you know they are not to. They're they're starting with a bang. I guess I would say. Um, This with a good is, uh, escape sequence. Normally they save these sorts of escape sequences for the end of the game. Right. Sometimes you gotta start with the finale, right? Yeah. That's they say. That's what they say. Start with the best stuff. Uh, and just to be clear, you were playing this on what platform? This is running on an Xbox Series X. Got um, it. Yeah, the, the build they provided run is, a, is an Xbox build. Uh, so I have not seen the campaign on a PC. Um, and I've been I've been rocking that multiplayer with mouse and keyboard, which seems like yeah. a a real sort of blasphemous Halo maneuver. <laughs> yeah, right. Like it just seems to go against the very fabric of of Halo by by attempting to use mouse and keyboard. But I gotta say, like it kind of changed changed it for me. Like I think I'm gonna play this on PC and do mouse and keyboard. Uh, I I probably will stick with the controller, but I am also going to play it on PC. Uh, I th- do think that this looks really good on Series X, but mm. you know I've been playing the multiplayer on PC, and you know I can I have a, a PC that I can turn everything all the way up and super sample it and all that other stuff, and and it's just so sharp and runs so well uh, that I I want to see. I kind of want to go back and, well, I will have to because the, these, this save will not transfer over, I don't think. Um, I want to see what a level like this looks like mm-hmm. running full bore on a on a PC, 3090, all that other stuff. So Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. And we did it. I mean, or I, did we? Oh, God. What's oh going no, to happen? Get up. Get up. And he dies, and that's the end of the game. Roll credits. Weird, right? Oh, you know, interesting choice. Oh, yeah. boy. Watch out. Hey, this is space, let me tell you. Yeah. You know, I think the, uh, and maybe, uh, you know, with, with five, I think maybe fidelity wise, the franchise began to kind of drift away a little bit from that overly, I don't want to call it cartoony kind of look, but just a certain, ah, certain sort of generalized, uh, you know, polish to it that maybe gave it that 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 sort of vibe yeah do you think do you think this game has from the from the the, just just sort of looks of it evolved in that way for the better i do i I think that they are building off of that style and i think that's just something that comes with more more power right i mean if you go back to halo one and look at what master chief looked like then and the just the number of polys all that sort of stuff i think they had to make some stylistic choices back then that you know they can make different ones now um you just so you're saying it was just a big green goop yeah kind of just a big green blob that you know sort of kermit yeah running at 480p or something and you know um and they're able to do a lot more now uh so this is the second mission uh this is basically you know the, the this pilot guy. I'm not a big I'm not a big fan because he is just trying to get out of there. He's just like, okay, we're going home now, right? And you're like, no, I'm I'm Halo man. We gotta go. Yeah, we well, got more murdering to like do. Sounds like the wrong person for the job, maybe. 
Yeah, well, you know, this is the, the things have gone bad on Zeta Halo. The big, uh, in the Infinity, which is the big ship that all the multiplayer was set on in in Halo Five, but it was also the big Earth carrier in the region, has just vanished, and there's just a lot of, or there has been blown up, uh, and so things are bad out here at Zeta Halo. Um, and as of right now, we're pretty much the only two humans that we know about. Hmm. Um, so, th so that's why he's like, hey, I, I just want to get out of here, uh, not understanding that if you just go home, then these guys are going to show up on Earth and blow it the hell up. See, I, I tried to get fancy with the grappling hook. That's it. Fall to your death. Fall to your right death. Right in that corner, that cute little yeah. corner. A cute little corner. I think, um, you know, for me, the problem I always have with Halo campaigns is, you know, obviously spoke to the fact that they uh, blend together in a way that is indecipherable, but the fact that of the moment to moment action being that kind of monotonous like flow mm -hmm. um like that to me that is the the thing that is just this inescapable inevitability that i've i've always been like oh god is this am i, am I just gonna like not remember this eight hours again like am i just playing this to never remember it again <laughs> <laughs> and and, I, and i'm kind of like and I want to know if you've had that uh, feeling yet. Like, are you, have you having played what you've played, even with this game, uh, you know, threatening to be open world in the way that it, that you're saying it is? Like, are you are you getting that vibe also? Are you worried about that? I don't think so. So I think it's an interesting thing the way they've paced the game out. So you know, this is mission two, um, and. So far, it has been structured very much like a Halo game. And and so there is that aspect of just like, I know what this is. I know how this will work. Um, I know how this flow is. I know how the pacing works. The grappling hook lets me close the gap in a different way. than Because Halo is always about that like combat puzzle thing, right? Of here are this co collection of enemies. They're all shooting slightly differently. Uh, they need to be dealt with slightly differently what's the best way to tackle each one of these mm. encounters and and in in a in, in oftentimes a larger than average arena for certainly a console first person shooter when you think about the first three halo campaigns um mm. and and that combat puzzle is still very much a big part of this game but i just i i haven't hit that point yet because just as about the point here through mission two and in the start of mission three where you start to get comfortable with just like oh yeah it's halo they change it uh and it, it's it is still going to be these large scale environments and these larger encounters or like being able to tackle these encounters from different perspectives here i'm trying to swing get a little fancy sort of works <laughs> um but it's the scope of it feels so much larger than it has in those previous games that like once you kind of get outside it still feels like the Halo combat but in a very different way and I'm curious as to how it will be received by players because I think there there were definitely moments there are uh, there are a few moments here that will We'll, I'll point out when we get to them where I looked at it and said like, oh, this maps directly to this Ubisoft open world game concept. Oh. I don't necessarily think that's inherently a bad thing, but a lot of people have had more than their fair share of the Ubisoft style open world game. You don't say. I do say. Um, and so I think there will be some people that just like look at that or, or take that knowledge uh maybe before they've even played the game and go like i can't believe they did this to my halo why mm. would they do this to my john halo um yeah because i was gonna ask like what what do you you know I, I guess what specifically do you think that you know the person who would dare say a ridiculous phrase like my halo uh, -huh. uh what would be that reaction like what it, i i mean i guess what you're you know i guess what i'm saying is like the thing you're describing seems like anti-halo well it is still that combat it's still those weapons it's still that pace and it still leads you into 
indoor environments where you have a Halo experience. It's sort of like ODST, but on a much larger scale uh, with way more side missions and other things you can do when you get out there. And I, I, I do take on a couple of quick side missions um, once we once we get out there. This is just a striking moment. I didn't actually do the cutscene at the end of this hallway, but I just I thought this was just a cool looking spot. Yeah, this game's got a lot of cool looking spots in it. Yeah, that's dope. Um, but yeah, I think there will be some people who, who will feel like the, the open world aspect is not what they're looking for, but I have found it to be freeing. And, and I think it's a, it's a larger, it's a much larger thing than it traditionally is. And I keep coming back to ODST because it's kind of the only other Halo that attempted any kind of world between the levels. Mm. Um, but that game didn't do side missions the way this game does. This game has an upgrade tree. This game has maps. This game has like things you unlock at places in the world that you can adjust your loadout. There's just, there's more downtime if you want it uh, to go like, okay, I'm gonna go back here and kind of outfit myself a little differently before I go and do this next objective. Like, like you might do like you might do in a Far Cry game, honestly. Um, See, for me, that is exciting. Like, that is exactly what I want to hear, if I'm being yeah. uh, transparent about the way that I personally feel about Halo games, where I almost see them as more of like this, you know, this this, this sort of like, uh, you know, rite of passes where you just like get through the thing and you do the thing. For me, to live in, live in it a little more, you know, like, and that is what sounds like is the big differentiator here this time around. Yeah. As someone who does, you know, have a problem keeping my attention locked on uh, on a franchise like this, to me, that sounds cool. And now I, I, I would say, like, the interest is, is peaked a little more than maybe it was yesterday. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something. And I think, it, and also, I guess I would say, I, I feel like it's really, really well made. You know, I know they took an extra year to get this thing together, but I, I, it feels really well polished. I think, you know, aside from the multiplayer progression stuff, which we talked about on the podcast last week, you know, I, I think that they have, I think, well realized these kind of open world concepts and found ways to put them into a Halo game that I think it makes sense, right? I mean, you, you, you see the Halo in those early games and you see just how big it is, but mm. they never really let you explore as much as you quite want to. The missions are the missions. You're kind of moving through them even when they're outside. This is more, this has more of a, oh, uh, look at that mountain over there. Like, oh, you can go there. Like it, it is a little bit more of that and it feels like a more well-realized take on what a halo ring is. Also, hear that? They put a freaking Zelda style you did the thing noise into this game. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> like weird, right? <laughs> like, yeah, that's damn. Okay. Um sure. Yeah. Who's going to say no to that? No, I like it. It's it's but that's what it is. Like they put a you solve the puzzle like little Zelda dungeon noise type of thing in there. Um, yeah, sounded like the the chime before maybe a, a, an announcement in the mall, but nevertheless, sure. like effective. Yeah, I've got this other lady in my head now. Um, oh, not Cortana. Okay. Um, What's her deal? Uh, that's a great question. Um, she was here to perform a mission um, that I believe was touched on in Halo 5, but I'm not 100% sure of that. But, you know, missions go sideways, I think, as he says in one of these cutscenes I skipped. They always do. Uh, and so mm -hmm. now you and this character who in the in the subtitles is only referenced as weapon are, uh, are out here trying to basically stop the banished from repairing this halo ring because uh, it does have a big chunk taken out of it. I died a few times in this this encounter, by the way. I just, okay. I wanted to get fancy with the grappling hook and this disruptor yeah, no, is really fun. It, you know, it, it uh, will stun enemies nearby. I grabbed an, I didn't even know you could do that until I just did that. I grappled an item. 
Oh, that's neat. We were able to catch it. That's cool. Yeah. I'm also. I, I guess I'm. I, I don't understand why these guys like continue to make the same shape oh, shield with, with its vulnerabilities. <laughs> like, yeah. You would think like, after they need five to shoot years. around it, right? I mean, they need to. I you know, guess I don't know. Like for them to. It's just like, are we are we going with this model? Are we going with this design again, guys? And the answer is yes. We are. Yeah. This, I think maybe the the, the, the top brass this? at Covenant HQ at, at uh, Banished HQ they don't really care about the jackals. They're just like, no, send them out there with those. Just put make just have more of them. It's fine. This was a bold. That was a dumb. Shields. Was, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I very much wanted to reel in and, and melee the guy on the gun. But mm. that was not gonna happen. Oh. oh my. Um, yeah, so this disruptor pistol will will stun nearby enemies if you take down an enemy um with it, and that's pretty fun. I like that they've like they've put some details about the weapons. You see there it says pistol, semi-auto charge, like all that other stuff. When you are walking over a weapon, it'll give you some quick details about it in case you don't remember. I mean, it's I mean, in case you don't remember what a needler does, I guess. But like, there there are some weapons that you'll be a little less familiar with. Um, Digging the American the campaign, Gladiators yeah. inspiration uh, for this, uh, this <laughs> yeah. right here. Being able to grapple around these things and, and like that that to me is a is a really big change. Um, and it just it like putting the grappling hook in there, I think, is part of I'm just going to that's why I'm dying so much, because it makes me want to totally change the pace of how I play a Halo game and just keep moving like the movement is so much fun and swinging around and, and, and closing the gap is so much fun. But the game isn't always built to support you just going full crazy the entire time. Mm -hmm. Um. And they do give you, there is like a cooldown with that hook. Yeah, it's it's pretty quick. Uh, and some of the upgrades will do things like uh, you can make it so when you hit an enemy with it, it shocks them. Oh, cool. Yeah, this. Uh, th so that was a, a mule, a, a grunt mule. And they have a little tool tip that pops up. and says, hey, those mules are carrying more weapons. When you kill them, a bunch of weapons pop out of them. It seems to just so happen that the weapons are frequently your starting loadout, which they probably had to find an in-fiction way to put the Earthman weapons in the middle of right. this Halo ring. Uh, so they're like, I don't know, he's carrying them, and he, it just pops out of them. This object, it's part of the ring's life force. Really gripping this thing like he's about to football yeah. throw it. There it is. I love it. There's that. There's that noise again. It's very good. All right. I guess make it or make it a notification on my phone. Let's do it. <laughs> Sell me that Microsoft. Yeah, right. Um, uh, you just ripped that out of the game. I bet uh, <laughs> it's coming out on PC. All things are possible. Uh, How is, is that a Spartan? We need to find out what happened. So this is your first upgrade, uh, and this is an enhanced shield that uh, basically gives you the, the ability to put points into your shield uh, to make it last longer. And like I said, you can upgrade the grapple uh, as well. Um, and uh, and there are two other things on the upgrade tree that I have not unlocked uh, yet. Wow, look at this place. It's so... Um, then you get outside, and we are, um, I believe this is mission three now, technically. You're gonna need to clear me somewhere to land. Incoming. And uh, the first thing we need to do is clear a spot for our for our boy to land, hmm. so that he can give us his spiel about how he really thinks we should go home again. I've told you, basically, eleven times. I, I need to go. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom so bad. <laughs> there's, there's no peeing here. It's space. Can't pee in space. Um, I think this this moment of going from space or going from inside to outside kind of reminded me of the Fallout games. Like you have that moment where the door opens and you see 
the vastness of the world around you. Sure. Um, sure. It's a it's a really cool moment. Uh, okay. So all the stuff that that mission one and two stuff I recorded last night. This stuff I recorded a few days before that, and so I'm a little hazy or on some of this stuff, but. Um, <laughs> And it's you still can a halo. still, yeah. I mean, like I was just gonna say, like it's it's this stuff that I will just gloss over. And again, mm -hmm. I realize, like you know, we're doing it now. It's it's more than half a dozen times, right? Like we're, this is the thing you do. I guess new guns yeah. and stuff will will separate things only so much. But um, I I guess I'm I now that you've kind of sold me on the open world aspect to it. I think for me, it's like, all right, well, how does that translate into the replayability or like the investment that I'm now going to want to make? And that's the thing that when I see right. something like this can drag you kind of in the opposite direction a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Because I mean, this is, you know, obviously it's a much larger environment than, than the missions before it, but you know, we're still doing a Halo. And I think that'll, that'll maybe, I'll be interested to see how you and, and people like you react to that aspect of it because it, while it is different like you know when, when we get up to some of these side missions here um you know it is just it, it is me running across an open world to get to a spot where i do some halo shit you know like it, it is still it's still that combat um and and i think I, I like that combat, even if, you know, I think, like you, I think some of the story stuff and some of the... I can't remember a damn thing about Halo 5. I remember Halo 4 was the one where there were two teams and there was one that was, like, hot on your trail or something. And eh, that didn't do so great. And then 5 was kind of all over the place, um, if I remember right. But it's interesting, like, if you think about this as, like, this is the sixth game, we should be finishing the fight in a second trilogy here. This doesn't feel like that. This feels like right. it is starting something new while kind of almost begrudgingly dealing with the elements of those past couple of games. Um, like, almost as if there's a team in place that's just like, yeah, I guess we were kind of saddled with making a sequel to that game, but we wanted to do so much more. And I'm curious to see how the story pans out, like, if it really does kind of... Uh, go in that direction because the, really the only thing I know about it beyond what I've seen in these first four missions is they send a lot of thing you know a lot of times when it comes to reviewing games uh, there will sometimes as part of an embargo they'll be like here's the things we don't want you to talk about and it's like here's a list of important characters found in this game right. and reading that list I was like oh okay like I, I'm interested in knowing more about how this stuff resolves but I don't I don't really know where they're going with it because I feel like Halo 5 was just kind of a mess and like resolving the events of Halo 5 doesn't seem like enough, especially for how much bigger this game seems than that. Um, it just seems like they tried to do a lot more than make a traditional Halo game. Yeah, and I think it's also worth saying that like Halo is in that unique sort of situation where it does have this... Uh, for better or worse, inescapable sort of molding to it. Yeah. And in no way is that an easy, uh, you know, kind of paper bag to find yourself out of, right? Like, that is... No, yeah. That like, is, Think about know, the last five years of shooters, or the last ten years of, like, what other shooter franchises have done with, like, hey, we're just not going to have a campaign. Hey, we're, not, we're just going to go whole hog on multiplayer. You think yeah. about the you know free to play battle royale games like the the landscape for shooters has changed the landscape for i think big blockbuster video games in general has really changed and so halo is this vestigial well that's this harsh but you know, like like it feels like it is from a completely different era mm -hmm. A video game and i think that this modernizes it in i think with the free to play multiplayer and also it just being awesome. Like, I think that multiplayer is just so much fun in a way that I, I've never been a big Halo multiplayer guy, but I think, you know, it, this is 
I think this feels great. And also I think it's helped by it, it not being a, a very great year for a lot of other shooters. Like, I think this is the shooter I'm going to play for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And having a, a campaign with a lot of side stuff and a lot of other stuff to do actually in some ways is really helpful with that. Cause like, I'm like, Oh cool. There's like, there's going to be even, even more stuff for me to do. It's not just going to be like 12 campaign missions and then I'll play them again co-op and then I'll find the skulls and do them again. Or, you know, like it just feels like there's more to it. I skipped that cutscene, and now we're kind of out of, out of that mission. And then we're out here. We have multiple waypoints. Now we are in an open world environment hmm. and oh, we've wow. got a map with side stuff with a, a forward operating base kind of just ahead and the forward operating base, the tower is, is basically mission four. And then we've got these FOBs here, some other, um, some other pips on the map. These FOBs are the equivalent of a far cry, uh, like outpost. Sure. Or a, an Assassin's Creed tower in some so cases. You're saying, so you're saying if the you clear them, you the they mm -hmm. open up more things. Yes, exactly. Ooh. When you clear them, it will, it will ping all of the other side activities in, in and around that base. How's it getting around then? Because John, Johnny Halo is like very much this. I mean, I know he's got a grappler now, so he can, he can move great distances relatively quick but those are short distances when you're telling me it's this open world how's that come into play or do you just like hightail it in a warthog yeah i mean so uh, there's a few different ways one you can fast travel to any of the the bases that you've captured so any of these fobs that we've we've gotten we can fast travel to them to get around the world and at these fobs you can spawn items um there's a currency or there's a, a, a number. I don't know. It's in the currencies. I don't think you spend it per se, but you earn valor for completing certain okay. types of missions. And there will be spawnable items at these bases that require um, you to have achieved a certain valor number before they're available. And so I can go here. And I think when we, when we do finish this, I will spawn an ATV after I'm done getting blown the hell up. Please um, tell me when you clear it. He, he raises his little halo flag. No, there's no, there's no, no halo flag, but like other Marines will show up. Okay, cool. All right. In some cases. So it's like, you know, the, yeah. So they'll, yeah, yeah, exactly. You've taken it over. It's yours. Now to business. Let's lock down Fob Golf. That's awesome. And so you'll see straight up, we climbed the tower, Eagle Eye Vision. You know what? They had to do this. Uh, they yeah, had to do I, I, it. They had to. Like, I, like you I think put it, makes it a couple of minutes ago. Like, you, how do you uh, transcend the generations? Right? Yeah. Because this is everybody's daddy's halo. This is granddaddy's mm -hmm. halo, right? How do you... How do you change it? How do you do it? Speaking of which, is, is the answer just straight up map barful? No, it's not. It's not just it's not that. If I do this, but you speak a different vocabulary. What the banished are up to. Yeah, For instance, exactly. Over here is and you you take that kind of time tested, like very honed Halo combat, and you bring it to different styles of encounters and here is in this open world. As someone that the banished value highly. So we've got high value targets. We've got, you know, some of the upgrade currencies will show up when you do this. Like, oh, the the Spartan point or I forget what they're called. I think it's, it's I think it literally is like Spartan point there. Yeah, Spartan core. There it is. So you get that. That's one point for your upgrade tree. Um, it looks like there are multiple UNSC squads engaged in trying to survive. They need your help, chief. And so that's kind of your first uh, acknowledgement that like, hey, there are still other Marines alive out here. It's not just you and the guy. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were pretty specific about the missions we could take on here. And, and it was two of these FOBs and two high value targets. I chose this FOB and one of the high value targets. Um, but you see here, I just straight up called in. Cool. 
and now we're on our way. Those are weapon spawners over there uh, on the right side there. So any weapons you found, which um, when we go do this, it's a, it's a neat thing when you go do this high value target, one of the unlocks ends up being like a variant on a weapon. Um, so it's like, here's a kind of a slightly better or slightly different version of the energy sword is, is what we'll what we'll get here. Um, and so here I am bypassing this mission that normally I definitely would have done, but but they were like, do this, 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 and this. I'm like, okay, cool. We'll drive past that and go over to do this other thing. Um, I think the world looks really good. I think it's, it's a good solid frame rate for what's a, a pretty sizable open world. Um, I tried to drive all the way. So I think you'll get a good impression here because I did drive part way and it's like, oh, fuck it, I'm going to run. <laughs> so Yeah, it's not exactly a uh, drivable terrain, but... Yeah, or if it is, I didn't find the, yeah, the right no GPS uh, around yeah. that. So, um... And it's nice to have these quiet spots where it's just like, I'm going to see how, like, can I get good with the grappling hook? I wish that it didn't have a cooldown just so I could Spider-Man my way through some of this stuff. But, um, but yeah. And this encounter that we'll get to, I, it took me a few tries to get it right. And I think that I left all this in because the way I end up accomplishing it ends up being stupid, stupidly straightforward. And I should have just done it from the start, but tried to be more methodical uh, than maybe I should have been. Yeah, but you know, I like, there is something neat, like, you're by yourself, it's quiet. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and That's... you'll come up upon patrols and stuff like that as you're out and about, and sometimes they'll be guarding something, like a vehicle or something you might just want to steal, or, you know, there's... So it's, there's our high-value target. You see he's got um, full-on boss health bar type stuff. And I'm like, okay, let's Far Cry it. Let's do the filthy Far yeah. Cry thing of let's hang out up here and just shoot everyone before we even get down there and engage. Um, and uh, as a result, you'll see me do this a handful of times um, because I keep screwing it up. Um, But this just feels like a good, fun application of the Halo tool set. I think that's the the best thing I can say about the open world stuff that I've done so far is, is that, is that they have taken the stuff that you know about Halo, the, the common elements of how this combat works, how these weapons fire, the Master Chief's shield, his abilities, like all that sort of stuff. They've given you a grappling hook and some other fun new toys to play around with that are very helpful in this kind of mountainous terrain mm. and turns you loose on these bases and some of these other things and kind of the how you do it from there is is kind of up to you uh and cool um and so i got pinned in a corner there screwed up and died didn't even die to the high value target just dumb mm -hmm. Hey, just, dumb. just another day in Halo. Exactly. But this seemed like the right approach. You know, you're like, well, I got to take out all the guys before I take on the, the big guy, or I'm just going to get shot in the back over and over again. So clearly this is the way I've got to do this. I've got to take out this sniper. I've got to do this sort of stuff and, and really uh, just be methodical about it. Clearly that's... You know, they put all this high terrain around this base specifically for me to be this sniping jerk up here, right? Uh, fucking with them, and uh, and so I had to stick to that. Uh, that's just that's that's video games, right? That's like okay, well, I, this is definitely the right way to play this. Um, when I probably should have been playing it more like I was playing Mission One and Two, of just like don't stop for nothing, let's get in there and and get in that ass, as it were. Um, maybe would have been the the smarter tactic out of the gate. Uh, so so with so with these, you know, saw a little tease of it of the things on the map and and your uh, you know taking over these bases or strongholds, whatever you want to call them. Like, 
do you is there enough is can you talk about some of the variety there is there is there a sign that like it's not just gonna be that or is it, it there there are other things there are even things that you find that are not highlighted on the map hmm. um little opportunities for you to maybe like gain some extra valor um and stuff like that uh that i was surprised like i was on my way to do one of the other objectives which is uh you know to rescue some marines which is which is what it sounds like you find a bunch of guys pinned down and you're like okay we've, we've got to get in there and, and save these guys um but uh on the way, there was like, here's another little goofy thing that like you look at and go like, oh, this really is an open world game in that template uh, of like, mm. here's another little side thing that's in there. And so it's interesting because you say like, this isn't, this isn't your, 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 this isn't your father's halo, but also the elements they're pulling from aren't exactly brand new either. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the, the open world template is, is also pretty well worn uh, at this point too. And I think it's gonna. I, I like I said. I think there'll be some people that are really put off by that element of it because I do think we still live in a world where there is that open world fatigue, and that hasn't been solved. And certainly Ubisoft is still making those. Um, sure. And and I think that that's. It seems like a choice that they probably made a number of years ago, right? This game's been in development a long time, and I think when they made that choice to maybe go this way, like maybe people weren't as done with this type of game. But I guess the other thing I'd say is, okay, so here's here's where I said like, oh, fuck it, I should just shoot the guy. Um, and then he ran over near that thing and I blew him up and he's dead. So now I just need to take out all the other guys and run up there and hit a button um, to win. And, uh, Maybe I should have just done that from the start. Uh, I really like the way this stuff meshes. I I am having a really great time with this in a way that I, you know, I, I've enjoyed Halo campaigns, but you know, I, I've never considered myself a Halo guy. Uh, Halo Three was the first one of these games I really liked, and that era of like that and Reach and ODST, I feel like were some magical games. And then after that, they never quite reached that height. This yeah. game, I think, but it, it, it's, it's weird to call it new again, because I think, again, a lot of this stuff does map to the type of open world game that that you're used to seeing. But sure. again, I, the way they put these elements together, like this recontextualizing the Halo combat in terms of these side objectives and different missions and stuff like that, I think does it a zillion favors and it freshens it up in a way that... Uh, like I, as the as this map was filling out, I was like, "Oh, I could totally see myself doing a hundred percent of this. I could see myself really getting into this because I think the combat is just very smooth and exciting." Um, and and the world just looks very nice and is a lot of fun. Like I, I'm I'm having a really good time with it. It just it seems like so far. You know, from playing these first four missions, and, and I haven't really played anything past this yet. Um, yeah, it feels like it's more than the sum of its parts. Um, mm. And man, I, you know, you start to see why maybe they didn't have campaign co-op ready in time, because the scope of this game is a little bit different than your traditional Halo game. Okay. But at the same time, I think it would be extremely cool to have like four players running around oh yeah this big ass environment hopping in a warthog and just getting out there and doing shit i think that sounds super fun yeah i mean in the uh in the in, in the spirit of like keeping the uh vocabulary of contemporary games alive and well like that must be a component of it um, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm so, curious to see how that how that how that kind of shakes out and comes together because I think, like you just said, it will become more apparent or maybe more of like a tolerance and sort of like understanding for the mission at the start. But also, yeah. how does that come together and how do you stick right. to the landing? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a shame that they won't have that and it launch because i think that would mm. be you know that would be incredible um but yeah that's it we you know we finished that mission and now 
we can kind of, you know, we can go places. We also, but the thing we got from there was that like, it's a, it's a modified variant of the energy sword. And now anytime we go to back to our base and go to that weapon spawner, it shows up on the list in terms of things we can do. But what I did in the meantime there, we cut, uh, I ran over to the tower, which is the, the fourth mission. Uh, and the last mission we can show. Um, somewhere they call the House of Reckoning, which is suitably ominous and banished sounding. We've uh, we've gotten a, a distress call from this area, so we're heading over here to see what's what, and this is where we will get our second gadget. And these guys just charge you, and I should have kept the shotgun to take care of those guys, probably. That would have been the smart move, but... I don't always do the smart thing. I do the yeah, stubborn I mean, thing. Halo doesn't necessarily train you to be smart. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't necessarily reward that. Uh, I feel like, you know, when you get to playing on legendary, so that was, you know, Halo 3 was probably my Halo high point, And I got all of those difficulty changing skulls and and finished it on the hardest difficulty setting and finished it alone and finished it in co-op and like i played halo 3 damn near every way you could um and uh it gets hard like you know like i think you're right but also at the same time that combat puzzle doesn't get any easier when you raise up the difficulty this is the default yeah. difficulty which is only the second highest uh mm -hmm. there are two more above this one uh, uh i guess it's what heroic and legendary the what they always call those. Um, but yeah, I think the other thing I learned playing through some of these sequences and, and dying a few times was like, I should just get on with it uh, and just come over here and hit this button and not necessarily clear out every single area. We've got some humans helping us out in, in this fight as well, so they're kind of keeping people busy in some cases. Um... And so it, it opens up these windows for me to just go like, oh, I'm just going to I'm just going to do the thing that it wants me to do and, and, and get on out of here instead of always having to finish every encounter. I think that's that's another difference. I feel like in past Halo games, there really is a I've got to kill everyone. I could try running ahead and just hoping for a checkpoint. And that certainly is a valuable, uh, viable uh, and maybe cheesy way to play the game. But you can do it. Uh, but I think the thing I learned here was like, oh, I should just turn on the gravity thing and then get out of here. See you guys later. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all fight down there. Do that. Well, that's no good. <laughs> Spartans normally don't get out of their armor very often. Okay, what's this do? So this is a deployable. It goes in your grappling hook slot. Um... And it will just, it will ping a radius and make those enemies show up on your, uh, you, you'll see them through walls. You'll, you'll see a silhouette uh, of them. Uh, this is a bad mailing right there. Yeah, this was in, this is in the multiplayer. No, this is not the multiplayer. This is, no. No, 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 I'm saying the... Uh, oh, the, the threat sensor, it is, okay. Thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, you oh, can, as a, as a like pickup a deployable pack thing, pack right, yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah, so this will... This will just kind of ping this radius. The upgrades make the radius larger, make it so you can deploy more than one at a time. And I think the final upgrade makes it so you can... Uh, it, it shows them constantly as opposed to, like, every time you see that pulse emanating from it, 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 it then fills it in. And for some reason, I thought maybe, okay, the pip's up there. Do I just go up here? I got lost for a sec. Tried this. This is not the thing. This is not the thing. And now I'm back down here where they're still fighting. I'm like, oh, I'll... Well, <laughs> I guess I'll go the other way. Well, that's neat. That was a cool little yeah. engagement there. Um, and we were heading up to what is the first, I guess, story boss fight? Um, pretty soon here, and this is another spot where I tried to cut around a lot of the cutscenes and such. Um, is, is that I like those cool generic man? weapon refill things. Um, yeah. 
as opposed that's, to always having to find your exact gun. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a few different types of those, one for kinetic, one for plasma, and one for hard light weapons. So like the different kind of factions of weapons that you that you find are represented. Uh, I w what I was asking before is, does the cooldown of that slot affect all of those perks across the board? So like, could you swap to the grapple hook? But also have to that's wait a, for that cooldown. That's a good question. I don't actually know that I tried that. You, you do just kind of tap on, tap right on the D-pad to, right. to swap them out. Um, so you should. I mean, I would assume it would have a separate cooldown. Um. I didn't find any of the skulls, so I don't know what sort of skulls we'll see. I'm hoping that the grunt birthday party's in there that makes it so children applaud when you shoot a grunt in the head. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is where we're kind of, like, getting to the, the nitty-gritty of, like, hey, the, the Banished have taken over this ring. They want to repair it so that they can really uh, fuck shit up. And, you know, now they're keenly aware that you are still alive. Um, and they're not they are not too into that. They want to stop that. <laughs> um, they want to stop you being alive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like so far, like, the you know, just to talk generally about the story and some of the cutscene stuff that, that has been in these first four missions, it is, a lot of it is of the, um, okay, here, I just skipped to this boss fight here. Uh, a lot of it is of the, like, well, he's interesting. We must trace, we, we get him, get out there and kill him, get out there and get him, like, type of stuff. It's not, it's not super exposition heavy. It's not, it's not a big lore dump. Um, this enemy has a, uh, this enemy is, is invisible, uh, which basically means, you know, use the new toy you just got. Uh, to you know, make him show up since that threat sensor renders him visible. Mm -hmm. And once you've done that, it's uh, not too tough of a fight. Easy to dodge that energy sword when you can see him coming. Not so hard when he's mostly invisible. Throwing these things, really fun. Take yeah, that, that fucker. Cool. Yeah, yeah. There you go. does a good Temporary amount of damage, too. It's done, yeah. God, I mean, this guy shut up a little bit. He could concentrate yeah. on fighting. Well, I, I, sh I think I shut him up. Pretty soon here. It's not that big of a room. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just look at Where have I gone? Like, who sure. could say? What's that? That's that guy. We need to get him out of that machine. <laughs> That's Halo. Hey, infinite. Yeah. It doesn't seem infinite. I mean, you know, I'm completing percentages. Presumably that percentage will eventually hit 100, but, uh, you know, they'll keep adding to it. Um, at least in the multiplayer sense. I, yeah, I... I really like it. Right. That's great to hear. I feel like, I mean, you know, this game has had a bumpy path mm -hmm. and to hear that the product that, uh, is going to be, you know, hitting is something that you are stoked about. I feel like says a lot. So. Yeah. I definitely wasn't sure what to expect kind of going into it. You know, it's like the, like how open world is it? Like they definitely tipped their hand enough on that to where, you know, it's not just going to be a string of missions, but I think what they've built is it's, it's, it gives it a sense of place that I think previous halos haven't quite had, you know, it'll give it landmarks. It'll give it certain things where like, Oh, I'm going to return to this spot and, and, and give it that sense of place that, that they, that they haven't really had. Uh, well, I guess ODST did some of that, right? I mean, yeah. By virtue of it being, that open world, but that was a city. It was a much smaller setting. It was a much smokier, jazzier vibe. Whereas this feels like, all right, we're going to take full tilt, full volume Halo. And now 
blow it out into this much larger thing. Um, you know, and, and I, I said, I remember when the multiplayer test started, I remember playing it and going like, I like this a lot more than previous Halo games, but I'm not sure what Halo diehards will think of it because to me, it felt just a little bit more Call of Duty-like in, in a few ways. And, and I was like, I wonder, I don't, I don't think they'll, they'll like that. They tend to not appreciate it when Halo gets more like Call of Duty specifically over the years. <laughs> um, but it seems like people are, are really liked it back in that beta phase. And now I guess it's technically still a beta, um, even though it's out and they're taking money for it, um, for cosmetics and stuff. But it, it seems like that that community has really, really liked a lot of the game as well. And so I wonder if this will end up being the same way where like, I'm looking at it, trying to imagine like, what would a, what would a Halo fan much larger than I want out of a Halo game? And I don't know that the answer I would come up with is like, elements of a Ubisoft style open world game. I think that that's on paper. I think I, I see a lot of people that would groan at that conceptually because of mm -hmm. how done to death that open world stuff really has been. Um, but like I said, that stuff I think comes together um, much better than it sounds on paper. Um, and so far I'm, I'm having a really good time with it. You know, I, I can't tell you how long it is. I, I you know, I haven't, I haven't even played much more. I don't, you know, we can only really talk about the first four missions either way. Um, but I'm hoping, you know, with that side stuff that it's like a good variety and that it ends up being a much longer and kind of richer game than the traditional campaign length that you're then kind of like, okay, now play it again in co-op and now turn up the difficulty and why don't you turn on these skulls to make it harder and, and do this sort of stuff. And like, it'll, it'll have that stuff. It does have, it does have skulls. Um, but yeah, I could, I could see a certain type of player coming away from this going like, I can't believe they did this to, to my halo. Like I said earlier, but I, but I wonder how it'll, how it'll pan out. I, you know, probably not worth spending too much time trying to like second guess what those, what those fans will, will think about it. But from my perspective as someone who is, you know, appreciated halo and, and liked i liked halo four and five fine I, th I think that they didn't really have legs and i think the multiplayer in five was was pretty disappointing and mm. they had the whole card system and and other stuff in that game that, that really kind of i think rubbed a lot of people the wrong way um but this feels like it's its own thing and and this in a lot of ways i think feels like 343 finally maybe planting a firmer flag and saying like this is our halo this really is our halo as opposed to you know, Halo 4 felt like, hey, this is a long legacy of the games that Bungie made and, and we want to try to make games in that direction. Like this, this to me feels like a much, uh, much more dramatic follow up than, than making just, if this was just Halo 6, right? If it was just like, hey, we made another Halo, I don't think anyone outside of those fans would really, would really care. The landscape has changed too much, but I think free to play multiplayer, bigger, more engaging world you eventually get co-op in that world. I, I think that that's a, that's a really compelling package. So I, I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I'm excited to play more like that's, you know, now that I'm kind of done trying to keep my headspace in this kind of four mission embargo zone, mm -hmm. like I'm going to try and see as much of this damn game as I can, um, uh, before they turn this build off. I think. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's not uh, it's not an easy thing to do to balance those two, uh, you know, competing forces of like keeping people uh, happy and expanding to, you know, more. In a mm. way, we know a lot about that, but, um, sure. but yeah, you know, it's um, it's definitely cool to see that they, in the process of threading that needle, have carved out their own thing, and I gotta say. I would like to play this game. And yeah. uh, I, it's not always a thing I say pre-Halo. <laughs> so, yeah. There you I, I have definitely walked into a Halo game being like, all right, they made another Halo. Let's see what this one's all about. I think I think five, I was definitely in that headspace um, when, when that game came around for sure. Uh, but yeah, man, it's cool. It's out, what, December? Um, it's happening. And 
it's happening. It's the multiplayer is out now. Like, I, yeah, that, that was the other weird thing is just like being pulled in the direction of just like, I really want to play more of the multiplayer, but I need to play some of this campaign stuff and get this video ready. And so it's, I don't know, man, it's, it's awesome to feel that like Halo is still this, this maybe, I think some people will think this is a shitty thing to say, but I think like, again, the landscape has changed so much that like, there's a part of you where you're like, is Halo still relevant to today's player in a post Fortnite, post PUBG? Free to play world for these ongoing multiplayer games is is anyone is anyone still out there other than that kind of diehard very standard traditionalist console player? And I think they have found a way to on on both fronts to uh, give it a, that wider. I mean, whatever the the numbers on Steam speak for themselves. Like they're they're finding they're finding that audience for sure. And yeah, I think that's awesome. I think it's awesome that they found a way to kind of like reinvent Halo while staying true to Halo. It, it seems. Like that'd be a really hard problem to solve. I mean, it took to an extra year, right? So, uh, but hey, if this is the result, I'm glad they took the time. Great to hear. Looking forward, yeah. man. All right, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll t- talk more about Halo, I guess, in December, probably. We have to. We have to. By law. <laughs>